My name is Willa Knight. I am with Application Records section in Public Inquiry. I have been with the division for about 28 years. Um, I am covering making applications and what you need to know. And as it turns out, a huge part of my presentation has already been covered. So this will be kind of maybe a review of what we've gone over so far this morning. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, but let's just get started. So what do you need to know on making applications? So we're going to, again, this has already been partly covered, but we'll, we'll discuss water right policy by area just a little bit. Readiness for filing a complete application Introduction to uh, land, public land survey system. Uh, discussions on duty, diversion, and other use calculations have we've gone over. We might touch a little bit on that still, and we will talk about making an application map. Um, whoa, whoa, wrong, but I found it, fixed it, sorry. <laughs> okay, so Roder, <laughs> This is gonna go well. Okay, so policy by area. So this map is an interactive map of Utah down in the lower right-hand side of our homepage is where you will find that. If you click on that map, it will bring it up so that you can have a better view of it and then you can click on the different areas as Teresa had talked about. Um, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of show you quickly the 23 area, so if you click Okay, let's go back. Up in the upper corner for Rich County is the 23 area. If you click on that where it says 23, it will take you to the policy page. Okay, this is where you will find a whole bunch of information for this area of the state. Um, it, it has links to more information or decrees, groundwater policies, whatever we have available up in the management area. The sources, can you change from surface to underground, that kind of thing, is the area open to new appropriation or not? That's what you will find on this policy page. Um, in this particular a place, uh, 23 area is open to what we consider a small domestic filing, which that tells you that they're under sources. If you click again on the, ma the map in the green area, then it will bring up a little more detailed map of that area and show you a little bit more information. If you're not sure if where you are looking at filing an application falls within this area, that might help you determine that. Any, any questions on that? Okay, so let's go on to filing applications and we have covered this a little bit. Elements common to all applications. Okay, we have to have the applicant's name, address. Um, ownership interest isn't such a big deal anymore, but it is helpful, but the name and address are essential elements to your application. We do need to know the source of water. Um, we need to know the flow. Like I said, we've gone over this a little bit, so I'm going really quickly. The point of diversion is where the water is diverted from its natural source. Say, if you have a pump in the river and then you divert it down a ditch and then from that ditch you're diverting it to your field, your actual point of diversion is where the pump is in the river, not where it comes out of the ditch. I just wanted to make that clarification on the point of diversion. You do need to know your beneficial use. How are you going to use that water? You also need to know the place of use. Um, is on the application form itself, it's, it's by 40 acre track or public land survey. We'll go into that a little bit. On your application map, which we'll go into a little bit, you can narrow it down more to like a specific parcel. So you do need an application map. Uh, municipalities are pretty much the only exception to that rule. We don't require the service area map every time a municipality files an application. But individuals or pretty much anybody else, we do require application map. Uh, we need signature of all applicants that are filing for this. And they, we do need filing fee. The filing fee starts at $150 for application and it is based on the water amount that you are filing for. So it would go up depending on the amount of water you're filing for. Um, any questions on that so far? Again, we've kind of gone over that, so that was just real quick. Okay, so what you need to know, the basis of your water right, um, is it a new water right, which would be an application to appropriate? Would it be an existing water right that you are filing a change application on? Is it a contract with, for instance, the Weber Basin 
uh, water conservancy district exchange application that we've talked about, or would it be shares in an irrigation company? Now the question on the zero percent ownership I wanted to point out, if it shares in an irrigation company, normally the shareholder will have a zero in that ownership, the, the irrigation company itself is the owner of the water right. That might be another instance where you would see a zero in the ownership screen. Um, you need to know your point of diversion or the approximate location. This is a proposal, we realize that, but we like you to get as close as possible on your point of diversion and your place of use. Um, you need to know the uses of water. The common filing mistakes that we do see is the proper ownership, especially if you are filing a change application on an existing water right. The first thing you need to know is are our records updated to show you as the owner of record for that change application? Otherwise, you cannot file to change somebody else's water right. So you have to show us that you do, in fact, own that water right. Um, reports of conveyance can take weeks or maybe up to a month or two to process. So you need to make sure before you come in to file that, that change that you have taken care of that important step, that you do, in fact, on our records own that water right. Or for the shareholder, the, the stock certificates for the irrigation company are in your name, or the contract is in your name for Weber Basin or whatever entity you are doing uh, your exchange application on. Um, a lot of times people don't realize that they need to file a segregation. This was covered a little bit. We had the pumpkin pie being split up. So if you need to file a segregation, that has to occur before you can file your change application. Um, some segregations are very easy and we can do them same day if when we review that water right, there are no supplemental issues, there are no questions on the ownership or anything like that. Sometimes we can do those fairly easy. Sometimes a proper evaluation will need to happen on your water right and it could slow the process down. If we don't know where your water right is involved in a supplemental group, there are several water rights watering the same field and they all say unevaluated, we don't know what your water right has in it as value to file that change application on. So sometimes the regional office, the public inquiry section would actually turn that over to the regional office and say can we, can we do this sole supply, can we evaluate that in house and sometimes the regional office will say we don't know, we're going to need a declaration of beneficial use from all the owners of record for that whole group that's listed in that supplemental group. Now I know supplemental groups are kind of a mystery. I do believe tomorrow we have somebody covering supplemental groups. Definitely tomorrow. So that's, but, so keep that in mind when you're, when you learn about supplemental groups, you need to know that sometimes before you can file your change application. Okay, pub, intro to public land survey. Who, who here knows public land survey system? Some of you? Okay, good, good. So basically the state is broken down into a grid. Way back when, um, it was a way to find out where we are in the state. So the township is a north and south, and the range is east to west. Um, there are two basin meridians, but for this point, for this part, we're gonna talk about the Salt Lake Basin Meridian. It starts basically at Temple Square. You go six miles north, township one north, two north, three north. Town, uh, Temple Square, six miles south, Township 1 South, Township 2 South. Temple Square, same for East and West. Okay, and it's a six mile grid and each township and range, and this is typical, there are some atypical section township and ranges, but typical township and ranges have 36 sections. So if you see this yellow box here, this is a blow up of that yellow box to show the 36 sections. Okay, section one all the way down to 36. And then we can break that down into quarter sections again. So section 13, we break that down into quarter sections, northeast, northwest, southwest, southeast. And that quarter section we can now break down into quarter sections. So these smaller quarter sections we refer to as 40 acre track. On your application, that's as small as you can go as far as your place of use. Any questions so far on public land survey system? Okay, so, oh, I kind of went over this without my slides, sorry. So, 
Um, this is probably a good slide to keep in mind for tomorrow afternoon. Just saying. Okay, so this is showing the quarter sections broken down. People can list um, if you, that's the whole northeast quarter section. Did we have a question? Okay, um, we can do like the north half of the southwest. Uh, you can do the, the quarter sections themselves, the northeast of the northwest. The, this is how we would break down your place of use. Okay, so the Salt Lake, or the Basin Meridians in Utah, like I said, we have two Basin Meridians in Utah. We have the Salt Lake Basin Meridian beginning in downtown Salt Lake, which is Temple Square, and that's that star there. We also have the Uinta Special Basin Meridian starting over here at this star. Um, it is important to know that because if, for instance, you are filing an application and you want it in Duchesne County, but our system is set up to default to the Salt Lake Basin Meridian. And if you forget, or a lot of times employees forget to make that change, instead of having your application plot out here in Duchesne, all of a sudden your property or your application is being plotted out for Tooele County, not Duchesne. So if it does get past us and gets through advertising, people in Tooele County are gonna look at that and look and see if it's gonna affect them over in Tooele County. And eventually, we will catch that error and we will have to start all over with the advertising in the proper Uinta Special Basin Meridian. So that it will be, we'll have to republish in the local paper in Duchesne County. And so that does slow it down. So it is important to know the difference between the Salt Lake Basin Meridian and the Uinta Special Basin Meridian. Any questions on that? No, okay. Okay, so marking a point of diversion, again, based on public land survey. So we're gonna locate the following three points as just a sample. So you read this backwards. Your starting point is going to be the quarter section. So the first one, we are gonna start at the east quarter section, okay? And then we are going to go south 500 feet, and we're gonna go west 1,200 feet, and that will be our point of diversion. Okay, the second one, we're starting at the southeast corner, and this one is just going north 2,000 feet, and that will be your point of diversion. Okay, if we're starting from the northwest corner, we're gonna go south 1,300 feet, east 4,000 feet, and there is the point of diversion for that one. So that's just kind of a, if you know basically where you are, this, this can get you there. Any questions on this? We'll, we'll cover more how to get an actual point of diversion when we go over the application maps. But this is, this is kind of down and dirty. If you just have this grid, this is how you can find a point of diversion. Any questions on this? Okay, we're gonna get over really quickly, you guys. Okay, so marking a place of use also. Um, if we want the northwest of the northwest, again, we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna find the northwest quadrant and then we're gonna say we want the northwest of the northwest and that is what we will mark for our place of use, okay? If we want the south half of the southwest, first we're gonna find the southwest and where is the south half? Well, it's gonna be both of these, the northeast or the southeast and the southwest of the southwest quarter, okay? If we want the northeast of the southwest, we're gonna still be in the southwest and it's gonna be the northeast quadrant quarter of the southwest, or the south, yeah, southwest. Okay, you can also go south half of the northwest and say, and say your, your, your ranch is, is really quite long, it covers more. You can go south half of the northwest and south half of the northeast, which would give you this place of use on your application, okay? Okay, so water right calculations were covered. Um, we talked about, cubic foot per second versus acre feet, cubic foot per second, how fast it comes out of the source, acre foot per second, the volume, based on duty of an area and the acres that you are irrigating. Um, we talked about the domestic is 0.45 for inside house use, part-time is 0.25 for inside house use. A lot of times I will get a question, well, does it, isn't the yard part of the domestic? No, the yard is part of the irrigation. This number is for inside house use only. We don't care about the size of the house as mentioned earlier or how many people are in the house. That is a, those are set numbers, 0.45 for year-round domestic, 0.25 for 
for part-time. So if you're going to have a cabin, you buy a, you buy a property that has been a part-time and you decide you want to live there full-time, you need to make sure you have enough water to cover that full-time <coughs> residence if previously it was only considered a part-time. That's just kind of a heads up. We talked about the livestock. Um, the equivalent livestock unit is a large animal like a horse or a cow. We do prorate by the size of the animal. So five medium-sized animals, Sheep, goat, pig is equal to one cow. 33 and a third chickens is equal to one cow. Um, one cow or one horse year round is 0 0.028 acre foot. Um, I don't know if you need that tomorrow, but it's, it's good to know. Um, we, I'll go through quickly again these samples because again, we have covered these earlier. But say a rancher wants to start a farm near Dugway, Utah, which is our area 16. How much water does he need for five acres of irrigation, 50 cattle year round, and a full-time home? Okay, the irrigation duty in Dugway is four acre feet per acre. So you need to know how much water you're going to need to file that application. So you take the five acres, you times it by four to get the acre foot amount for that use. Um, the cattle times the number of livestock times 0 0.028 for year-round stock watering use, we'll give you the acre foot amount for that. And then the full-time domestic is 0.45. You add all those together, this application you will need to file 21.85 acre feet to cover all three of those uses. Okay, any questions on that? Um, there is the duty map available on our website that shows the different irrigation duties. For our purposes today, all our samples will be uh, four acre feet per acre. Just. For, to make it easy. But you can get on our website to find the, the different irrigation duties for the different areas. Okay, so our sample problem number two, a rancher has a water right for 300 sheep, or 300 cattle, sorry. How many sheep can he irrigate, or can he water with this water right? Okay, so we talked about five, five sheep is equal to one cow, so you take the 300 times five and it's 1,500 sheep, yes, okay. So say a developer wants to build a 10 lot subdivision in Delta, Utah, which is area 68. Each lot is supposed to have enough water for a quarter acre of irrigation, two head of livestock and a full-time home. How much diversion will the water right need to have? Okay, so we're gonna start small. We're gonna start with, well, how much does each lot need? Let's figure that water amount. So quarter acre irrigation times four, the two head of livestock, the two horses, times 0 0.028 is the 0 0.056. Full-time home, again, 0.45. You add those together. Each lot is going to need 1.506 acre-feet of water. And then we're having 10 lots in this subdivision, so you want to times that by your 10. So the application will need to have 15.06 acre-feet. Does that make sense? Okay. Number four. Say we have a farmer that had a water right in the Brigham City area and he was watering 150 head of livestock. He doesn't want to water 150 head of livestock anymore. He wants to change that use to supply a full-time home. He wants to build a house up there on his old ranch. He wants to have a part-time home. He wants to keep 10 horses and he wants irrigation for his yard. So we have all the elements we need except how much irrigation can he have with this many head of livestock that he's starting with? So how much water does he have for his 150 head of livestock? Again, you're going to times that by 0 0.028. So we have 4.2 acre feet to start with for our change application. Okay, our full-time home, again, is going to be 0.45. So we, we know that one right off, okay? The part-time we also know right off is 0.25. The 10 horses is going to be 0.28. You add those together, which I didn't add them together here. It's 0.98. You're going to subtract that from our beginning acre foot amount of 4.2. So we have 3.22 acre feet of water left over to apply to the irrigation portion. Well, how much irrigated acreage does that give us? You are going to divide that by four and it's 0 0.805 acre that he can now irrigate for lawn, flower bed, garden, any landscaping, that is gonna be his limit, okay? 
Any questions on that? Okay. Diversion and depletion, Will went into this very quickly, so I'm just kind of kind of go through here, skip most of this. I wanted to show you um, the slide, what happens, okay, so what happens if you don't take depletion into account when you are doing your change application? So let's, I'm just going through this because Will had a very similar sample on his, so let's, okay, so if we start out with 12 acre feet of our diversion, so we're starting with um, three acres of irrigation and a four acre duty. We're gonna say, we, think we figured this on the, I believe it was Camas area, which has a 53% depletion rate of depletion. So our total depletion amount is 6.36 from that original 12 acre feet. So that's the number we're looking for, is the 6.36 acre feet diversion. Uh, remember, livestock is 100% depleted. So if we're changing it to we, talk, we start with the 12 acre feet. If we keep that 12 acre foot amount as our, division, or as our diversion and we apply the 53% and in this instance we're, we added livestock. We added 50 head of livestock that is considered 100% depleted. If we don't take that 100% depletion into account, then here I quit pointing with my finger. Here we would have 7.02 acre feet in depletion which exceeds our historic point of 6.36, so this is considered an enlargement of the right. This is where people would say the state is taking my water because now instead of 12 acre feet diversion, I'm gonna have 10, I don't remember, 10 something, but the, the depletion on here is exceeded by 0.66 acre foot from the historic amount. And you cannot go over that historic amount. A lot of times, so this would be referred to as a haircut because we have to balance these two numbers either equal to or less than. It cannot be more than either of those two. So if I go backwards, the diversion, nope, the diversion amount now drops down to where is that slide? Maybe I passed it. Yes, 10.76 acre feet is the amount you can now divert to add 50 head of livestock to this water right and get that 1.4 acre foot 100% depletion. So th this is this is probably one of the more complex issues we deal with. Are there any questions on this? I know Will did cover it and answered questions. Yes, can you wait for the mic? and I will try to answer. If not, Clark, heads up. I, I think if I understand right, the, okay. the idea behind that is that in the previous situation, a certain portion of that water was going back into the aquifer or whatever. Yes. Now you have livestock, none of it's going back. That's why yes, it's being exactly. reduced overall. Irrigation, um, in this instance, Camas area is 53% depleted. The rest is considered to go back either through groundwater um, seepage or maybe it goes back to the river or a ditch, but it does get returned somehow. The rest would be lost through uh, the crop consuming part of it, part of it being evaporated, but it is considered depletion because it does not return to the natural source. And same with the domestic, which is considered 20% depleted. Any other questions? And did that answer your question? Okay. Okay, so we went through that. Yeah, we do refer to it as a haircut. Um, until people understand, sometimes they can get pretty upset with us. Depletion is a hard concept to understand. Okay, so a big part of your application is going to be an application map. Um, now we have a wonderful application or program called Application Map Wizard, and it is marvelous. I love it. I use it multiple times a day. It used to be you'd have to get the plat map, the ruler, and try to measure out where your point of diversion is, where your place of use is. This map wizard takes all that away, makes it very easy. So for your, yes, question, James. 
so if somebody comes in and they're deciding they're going to get a haircut, <laughs> yes. can they make an adjustment to their application at that point and say, look, yes. I want to go ahead and water two acres because that'll keep me solid and I won't get any haircut? Is it, can they make a change at that point or is it a change application? The only reason they would need to cut back their water wa amount is if they are changing how they are using the water. So it could be part of the application. Instead of waiting for the order of the state engineer to tell them that is a condition that they have to reduce some use, they can account for it in the application itself as part of the comments or something. But yeah, you're filing a change application. That would really be the only time a haircut would come into it would so come you into play. It back to where you want it. If you withdraw the change application. Well, uh, what I'm saying is, in that same calculation, if he decided to irrigate a little more land, he could have kept whole. He would have just had to adjust his numbers to maximize his. Uh, his anyway. If if he files an application that did not previously have livestock and he wants to add X amount of livestock, that is 100% depleted. He can't turn around and keep irrigating more land. I don't. Maybe I'm not my understanding your question. My question is: Once question. he's filed, let's say, okay, I'm going to drop my livestock back to 35 now because then I know I won't quote get my hair cut. Uh, I'm going to drop my livestock back, and I'm going to irrigate this corner so that they have better grass, and then I'm going to remain my, keep myself whole. If his change application has not been certificated, giving him that now depletion. Once it is certificated, that is the limits of his right. If he files a new change application that changes the depletion amount, and he gets some of that back, he would have to withdraw that other change application that gave him the haircut or a, an, or a portion of a haircut or whatever. But as, until that is certificated, he can file a different change application and withdraw the previous one to reduce his haircut. So he would know he's getting his haircut before it's certificated, would he not? Hopefully he would, okay. but okay, that depletion amount is going to be there. He can't say, well, I'm, he can't, are you saying, can he segregate a portion of it off? That depletion amount is going to be based on historic depletion. And if you're segregating a portion off, you're segregating off a portion of that depletion or the, the, the irrigation amount has the depletion that we would start the figure with if it's going from all irrigation to livestock. That depletion is the amount, no matter, he would have to reduce his irrigation. He, well, he'd have to reduce his livestock if he wanted to maintain the full amount, because that's where the, the problem the, if is. If he's adding any livestock, it's going to affect that depletion, because livestock is 100% depleted. Even if it's one head of livestock, his depletion amount so will change by sure. 0.028 acre foot for the one head. Willa? It will change if you're adding livestock. Will it? Yes. Maybe I can jump in here and Okay, try thank to you. Um, so anytime you change your uses, since each use has a diversion and depletion assumed amount associated with it, when you change it, the balance of the diversion and the depletion are going to be different. And they always have to be less than the heretofore uses, less than or equal to. So you're either going to end up requiring less diversion, less than or equal diversion, or less than or equal depletion in order to have that balance occur. Unless you're very, very creative and end up with uses that look almost exactly like the previous uses. Which, why would you file a change? Uh, no, why that <laughs> happens is because the the principle is that if you enlarge your right, which means increasing either the diversion or the depletion in the change application process, then by enlarging, you create a bigger right at your priority, which is going to impair all the other rights that are junior to you. And so that's why that has to be enforced, and that's why that happens. So just, just realize going in that if you're adding livestock to your water right, there is going to be a depletion reduction. Okay, that, any other questions? Yes, we, we wait for the mic. Livestock. Wait for the mic, please. <laughs> what if you go from having livestock to pasture? So wouldn't it increase? Because your rate of depletion. You you would start less. you would start with the depletion amount of the livestock, 
and then you would have to figure what that depletion would be on the irrigation side, and that would determine how many acres you can irrigate. You can't, you cannot enlarge, you still cannot enlarge the diversion amount. You have to, you have to balance between the diversion amount and the depletion amount. But yeah, you're going from 100% depleted use to roughly a 50% depleted use. We do take that into account, but you still can't enlarge the diversion amount. Did that answer your question? There, wait for the mic, please. <laughs> we need more than one mic in here, I think. So if you originally had the certain amount of acres you were just irrigating, you did the full change application to have now some livestock, you can't mm -hmm. irrigate as much. Right. Then 10 years later, it's already been proved, you wanna go back to no livestock, you can't do that. You can go back to no livestock, but you cannot regain irrigate. the depletion amount that you lost. Okay, any, I know this is a big topic. Any other questions? Okay. Did we have a comment? Okay. So, oh, let's go, where was I here? Okay, so on to maps. So you can use our map wizard to get your point of diversion. Uh, you will need to know the approximate location. We bring up an aerial photo of the area and you will basically point to it. We will click on that map and we can convert that into a point of diversion. You also need to know the approximate place of use. Um, you can get, and that is normally associated or very close to your point of diversion. So our application map wizard is under the link on our main homepage under applications forms. It's gonna be under the miscellaneous head a heading, uh, lower right hand corner of that page I believe and it is called application map wizard. Question for you from uh, one of our remote locations. All right. At the end of the day though, the diversion amount doesn't change, just the use. No, in our example of adding livestock, we did have to reduce the diversion amount in order to not enlarge the depletion amount. So the diversion amount could change. You, you could, that, that's where people refer to the haircut as we are reducing the diversion amount to account for the depletion of the livestock or, or whatever use it is so that we're not enlarging the depletion portion. Yes, your diversion amount can change. Okay, anything else? Okay, so um, where was I? Yes, uh, Mike. So is there any depletion attributed to just open irrigation water, like it flows through a long lateral several miles? Does that get any depletion? Um, you can get uh, evaporation loss through ditches. Um, a lot of times the irrigation companies will have to account for that if you are basing a change application on irrigation company shares. They do have to account for evaporation loss in the canals. That's part of what we call carrier water. But uh, water that goes down through the ground, that's yeah, considered, that's, just goes it, back it, into the- It percolates on down to hopefully an store. aquifer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our map wizard, I kind of covered this, allows you to select a point of diversion and place of use from an aerial photo. You can print a map to accompany your application. Uh, it can be generated with signature lines, uh, which is nice. You don't, if, if an application comes in with the map, we don't require you to sign the application and the map. But if, there, if we need a clarification on the map or if the map didn't come in with the application and we call the applicant and say, hey, we need a map, I will generate one for you. Please review it if it looks okay. Then we would require a signature to say that yes, this map is actually reflective of my application and you would send that back in. So keep that in mind that if you don't submit a map and we request one at a later date, you will have to sign. Or if we have questions on a map and need clarification, you would need to sign that. Um, let's see. The application map wizard maps are not acceptable as proof maps. So proof engineers, land surveyors, don't use our map wizard to come up with your survey points of diversion or whatever. That is not acceptable. Okay. Here is a sample of an application map. Um, here is, where did my map, here is our point of diversion. Here is our 40 acre track. We've kind of cut it off at the bottom, but this is where we would narrow it down to where in that 40 acre track or that quarter section 
is your actual use going to take place? You can turn on um, map layers and turn on the parcels, but then you would need to highlight this is my parcel. Um, this would be if it's a smaller parcel. If it's a large parcel, we and you can still outline your parcel, but we would m more than likely request that you narrow it down a little bit. Well, where is on that 40 acre parcel is the house going to be built or where do you think those uses are going to take place? So, but this, this is a, a sample map of, or a sample of what we would look for for your application map. This you will notice does have the signature block on it. Um, any questions on this? Okay. Okay, so you can do researching with our map search. If you go onto our website, we if you go into a water right, there is map view. You click on it brings up an aerial photo. You can map, you can search with Esri. Um, this is an aerial photo. Um, this is a topograph. You can change the base map. You can br bring up base roads. You can you can go back in time. You can um, bring it back to the present time. Uh, this is a really good tool for you to do researching with um, when you're looking for historic information. Um, so we, we you can also search uh, by layers. So this this would be like if you went into map view on a water right and turned on all the points of diversion, you will notice that some of them, the red are going to be well locations, the blue are surface location points of diversion. You will notice that there's, this one has a two, this one has a four. That means there are two water rights associated with this point of diversion. In this one there are four water rights associated with that point of diversion. If you click, where did my mouse go? If you click on that, it's going to bring up this little box that will list the water right numbers, those two water right numbers associated with this particular one. If you click on either one of those, it's going to bring up the water page, the water right page for that application so you can get more information that way. So this is a handy tool if you know the area of where you're looking for but you're not sure really of the water right, this is a way you can find that. Um, we have, you can turn on different layers, uh, you can turn on your points of diversion, you can turn on the parcels, you, uh, it says here not shown on the scale so you would need to zoom in obviously. Um, we have adjudication going on in different areas of the state. If you want to know if where your property is located is part of an adjudication, you can turn on the adjudication books. Um, it does take a minute for that to, to build that layer and to refresh, but it will show you the boundaries of the adjudication and you can see if you are within a particular adjudication area. Um, this is where you would go to change the base map from aerial photo here to the topo or, or the roads. If you go into search that, I might have a slide on that, yes. You can, if you know the water right number, you can put in that water right number uh, change application number, exchange application number, you can search by that. You can search by address. You can search by county parcels in most counties. I think Duchesne County, we still don't have that layer, so that, that search is not helpful there. But you will need to know the county where the parcel is located and the parcel number. Um, Depending on the county, sometimes you need the dashes in that parcel number, sometimes you don't. So if at first it says a parcel is not found, go take the dashes out or go put the dashes in and sometimes it will find it that way. If you know the public land survey location, you can put that in and search by that. You can search by UTM, um, uh, latitude, longitude, if you know that, you can search by that. Tools is where you would go to print it um, or uh, there's other things there like um, annotating if you wanted to highlight anything. But that is, that's how you can use our map view or map search to research our, our website or for water rights. So we very quickly covered a lot of this. Um, elements common to all applications, uh, basic, uh, well, intro to a public land survey system, basic water right calculations, and how to use the division's website to create an application map. Um, very, very quick, uh, we did cover a lot of things multiple times so far. So any questions or anything? No, we're all good. It's all clear as mud. We're good with diversion depletion. <laughs> I kind of got beat up on that one. <laughs> but are we good? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you.